everybody in the country. She was Aunt Lil to everybody. That's all they called her. It kind of takes me back in time. You know, I spent a lot of time there. Lots of times I'd go up to Aunt Lil's, my sister and I, and work in the store with her and help her a little bit. It's a time capsule right from the day it opened in 1900 until it's closed in 1963. There's something from every year that you could find in there that, that was sold in that store. When I walked in, I thought, oh my, this is what you see in old time movies. This is, this is what it looks like back in history. Growing up in the Caribou, I always knew that the store was there. I just had no idea how much was actually there. And you probably think you're looking at footage from a museum or something, but you're not. That's exactly how the store is and has been since 1963 when they just locked the doors and walked away. Ever since I was a kid, all I wanted to be was an explorer. Sail the seven seas, find new worlds. But Uncle D, everything's already been found. What? Like everything? Well, yeah. Oh, man. Well, so much for that. But if I can't be an explorer, I can still be an adventurer. So I bought a motorhome and I'm hitting the open road. My name is Dustin Porter and this is Destination Adventure. It all started in the uh, Tyrol area of Northern Italy where Italy borders up on Austria, right at the base of the Alps there. He had had an uncle who had come out to search for gold and he had letters from his uncle. They spoke Italian, of course, and the uncle wrote British Columbia as British C-O-L-O-M-B-I-A, British Columbia, which is how they spelled it in, in Italian. So he and his friends booked passage on a ship to Columbia, which was about 3,000 or 3,500 miles away from where they really wanted to go. The captain, who was a pretty reasonable fellow, agreed to put them off the ship um, at Colon, C-O-L-O-N, which is in Panama. They had no money, they had no way of getting where they were going, and so um, they went to work uh, digging the Panama Canal. Anyone who knows about the Panama Canal knows about the uh, conditions. They were just atrocious and uh, yellow fever and dysentery and malaria. They all got really sick. I don't know what the disease was, probably diphtheria or something like that. But I, I believe a couple from California t took him and nursed him back to health. One of the bosses took Louie home to San Francisco with him and his wife nursed him back to health. And once he got healthy in that, then they put him on a boat to Victoria to his uncle's. When he got to Victoria, his uncle wasn't there. It, it, his uncle had written Victoria, BC, but it was Yale. He worked in Yale for a bit and then um, he came north. Around that time, a woman, a young woman named Clara Noble was appointed as the teacher at Laclahash School. He decided that uh, this was going to be his wife and uh, he courted her and they got married and um, shortly after that they decided that they wanted to go and find a ranch of some sort uh, on their own and uh, they headed north. By 1898, 1899, they were um, renting the uh, ranch at Mountain House, which is 158 mile on the old Caribou Wagon Road. They stayed there for uh, a couple of years. She had uh, a, a couple of babies. They left the 158 mile and uh, they, he knew about the land at 153 and it was really nice land as far as he was concerned and so he preempted 
160 acres and uh, started uh, working the land. Because the place was uh, on the road out to uh, Soda Creek and out to Likely and out to Horsefly, uh, there was a fair amount of wagon traffic, freight traffic, uh, people stopping by. And so inevitably, people came and said, can we stay the night? Because of the number of people that were stopping and, and asking if they could uh, stay the night, they ended up building uh, a, a large roadhouse, 153 mile roadhouse. The bottom part had uh, quarters for the family and then some rooms for people to stay in. And the top part was one big room that was for the uh, freighters, uh, the drivers. It was sort of a dorm room. The partitions upstairs were just oil cloth. They had little slats and it was just oil cloth on for partitions. So if you snored, you, everybody heard you. <laughs> I'm sure. The old wagon trains had to stop. They didn't go very far in a day. And so everybody wound up with beds and, and feeding them. And she had a reputation of one of the best tables on the road. When they moved into the, the 153 mile roadhouse, um, they kept that little building and made it the store. And that was the first store. And so gradually the 153 mile store came about. I think in 1915, uh, that little store was too far too small and they ended up building the present building which, which you see there today. That store uh, served this area. It was, it was the, the place you could get anything there. If you couldn't get it, they'd order it for you. And it was well used by the people of 150 Mile, which was the center of commerce and um, governance for the whole area. They used the, the 153 Mile store. It was the place to go, place to gather, place to socialize, place to buy things. It was, it was the place. great you know lots of people went through the stages would stop there and when they were going to town they'd leave their leave orders for different people lots of people we'd put them up and be packaged and ready to go when they came back and and there was always people stopping that store served this area really well uh, until Clara's daughter who was running it then died right there behind the counter. She died and uh, they closed it down and never touched it since. It's the same as when I worked there. They took nothing out. Basically the door was closed and locked and, and never opened for public sale again. There's a lot of information we don't even know that exists. Uh, Allison, my wife, finds stuff in there every time she's in there. She finds new stuff to, that we don't know existed. When you walk in there, it's like a step back in time. It's just like it was in the 1900s. Uh, just unbelievable. The, the kinds of things that you can find there. The, the, the clutter, the, uh, the old stoves, the old equipment, everything is just the way it was, uh, you know, in the early 1900s. And it's just a remarkable place. You guys ready to take a look in the store? Let's check it out. I've been filming in here the last few hours. So I just want to take you for a tour and show you some of the amazing stuff I'm finding in here. First of all, just look how full this place is. Unbelievable. These cabinets, they're just full of old letters and documents. 
super clothing for Western Canadians. Fancy. A lot of the bigger stuff that they didn't actually stock in store, you'd order from a catalog like this. This one's from 1904. Be very careful. Some amazing stuff in there. Life Magazine, November 21st, 1949. 20 cents for that. One really crazy thing that I found is uh, Lil died in here in August of 1963. And the calendar here is still on August 1963. So let's start in the corner here. This cabinet is full of men's shaving stuff. That's a neat kit. Two of them there. This is all like uh, for fixing horse tack and whatnot. It's full of buckles. Unsold. And this section here, this is all like the cigarettes and cigars. These tins are still full of tobacco. These boxes full of cigars. Quite the collection. Copenhagen chewing tobacco. Yeah, that's kind of cool. $1.98. Brand new lighter. I'm really curious what this uh, Chinese stuff would have been. Not sure. And you'll notice there's a, there's a lot of stuff in this store that is... It never sold, but it's brand new, still with the manual. Cream separator. That's pretty cool. And over here, there's this one. KitchenAid Model 3C. Neato. Pocket cutlery. Hmm. Look at the print on this. Holy. Lots of colors. Replacement filler. It's for the inside of a thermos. Oh, 1940. Coca-Cola. And these, this is cool. These are all chocolates. I just love these boxes. So cool. Oh, 
It's an egg scale. That's pretty fun. Oh, look at the spices. And for quite a number of years, this was also a gas station. So they have a good collection of uh, gas and oil stuff in here. I love these old buttons. Wow. That's pretty amazing. The oil's still in there. So crazy. And this back here, this is probably my favorite section of the store. It's like the office section. It's just neat because a lot of this stuff is still dated. 1959, 1947, 1954. So much paperwork in here. I think that lighter right there is snakeskin. Wow. The old safe still says Christina on it. Amazing. Oh, and this is so much fun. Look at this. Still in the original stand. This is all like uh, birthday cards and stuff. Plan ahead. Happy next anniversary too. <laughs> That's a fun one. Another birthday. It happens to everyone. Time wounds all heels. I don't know. Maybe you like the heel of a boot. I don't quite get that one. I don't know. <laughs> Comedy was different back in the day. Oh God, <laughs> that's pretty fun. And if we come around the corner here, I like this. This is a wooden bird cage. Never see that again. Maybe alarms or something. Not sure what those are. Oh, they're telephones. Wow. That radio still has the manual. That's pretty cool. Old Morse telegraph. This absolutely blew me away. This is all new in the box, shoes and boots. Flashlight section. Look at that fur coat. Holy. Pretty uptown. Reading glasses, sunglasses. Pretty amazing. They got all this stuff custom made for the store. 1934 on that one. You guys will like this. This cupboard is completely full of brand new, like beauty products and stuff. I don't really know what any of it is. Pretty fancy little boxes for it though. Look at that box. It's pretty wild. It still smells super good in here. Um. 
little sterling silver case. It's probably eyeliner or something in there. Wow. Violet powder. Not sure. This corner over here is pretty fun. This is all uh, games, like board games and stuff. You know what? There, there was kids that grew up uh, on this property. Three Stooges comic book. Wow. Not even out of the plastic wrapper. <laughs> yeah, there's kids that grew up on the property here. I'm amazed they didn't go through this stuff. Like these old Marvel caps. For toy pistols, guaranteed surefire. Made in Canada. Like that marble maze. Brand new marbles. It's cool, all these boxes are made out of tin. This is all Halloween stuff. I know they used to have quite the celebrations here, so. It was from a Halloween party or something. There's quite a lot of camera stuff in here. All the old photos that you guys saw throughout the video. That was a collection that was actually found in here. A uh, whole box of negatives they found in here. That's a cool iron. Maybe gas powered or something. Lots of sewing stuff in here. This is pretty amazing. Still works too. It's crazy. This cabinet here, it's full of uh, corsets and jewelry. Uptown girl. Wow. Couple more things I'll show you at the front of the store here. Take a look at this cabinet. This is like all, all pharmacy stuff. It's a huge amount of stuff in there. I don't know what a lot of this stuff is, really. So they had a blacksmith shop here. A lot of this stuff is probably things that he built. And he's very famous for his bells. Listen to the ring on this. Beautiful. And this, I think, is my favorite spot. Look at this. This is all the store books from the day it opened. Everything bought, everything sold. Look at this one, 1899 to 1910, that book alone. I'm not gonna open those because they're so old and fragile, obviously very irreplaceable. But my first visit here, Allison was nice enough to 
to show me through some of these books. And it's amazing. In elementary school, we're taught about the the people that started and built the city of Williams Lake. And you can see their names in that book, signed off what they bought, what they ordered. Just crazy to see that. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And a very special thank you to all of my patrons that help make these adventures and these videos possible. I've noticed a big boost on the Patreon page lately and I really appreciate that. And I have a whole bunch of bonus content coming onto the Patreon page from this video because a lot of stuff happened that didn't quite fit the storyline of the video, but I still really want to share it with you guys. Um, there are sections of the store that never made it into the video and a couple of the interviews. I want to just share the, the complete interview. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting information in there, both historically and just, in my opinion, life wisdom. I really enjoyed chatting with everyone about this video and I can't wait to share it with you guys. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.